Hey, so welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a one-way ANCOVER. So we'll we use this test when we have an independent variable comprised of um, different levels, so a categorical independent level. So that could be something like treatment group versus control group. And when we have a dependent variable that is continuous, so that could be performance on some sort of test. And also when we have a covariate, which is uh, continuous as well. And what we're asking is whether uh, there is a difference in the dependent variable between groups whilst controlling for the covariate. So in this example, we're going to imagine that we have allocated people to some sort of cognitive intervention, and we're going to measure their cognitive performance after receiving this cognitive intervention or after having been allocated to a control group. So for if we take a look at this uh, spreadsheet, zero is going to represent the control group. So we've got 20 people in this condition, and we've got 20 people in the intervention condition. So what we're going to ask is, is there a difference between these two groups with respect to their cognitive test scores? And more specifically, we're going to ask whether there's a difference between these two groups with respect to their cognitive test scores after controlling for age. So the ANCOFA is going to allow us to do that. Um, so in addition to looking at the ANCOVA itself, we're going to take a look at some of the assumptions of the ANCOVA and we'll take a look at how we can report the results of the test. So if we head now to SPSS, we can start to tell the program the names of, of our variables. So if we go to variable view and then go to name, I'll just enter something like age here, then I'll enter condition. Then I'll enter finally score, so that will represent cognitive test score. Then I will just indicate that age is a scale variable, that score is also a scale variable, and that condition is a nominal variable. Lastly, I'll go to values, and I'll use a zero to represent control. So that's the control group, and I'll use a one to represent the intervention group. So I'll just click add, then I'll go to OK. Then I'll go to data view. And now I can just copy and paste this data from the Excel file into the SPSS file. So that's the age data. So I can go there. This column tells the SPSS which group people are in. So that can go in that column. And then we've got the cognitive test, test scores. And so let's put those into this last column. So some of the assumptions of the ANOVA are, so of the ANCOVA are the same as the assumptions of the ANOVA. For example, you want your data to be normally distributed within each condition or each level of the independent variable. And you want there to be homogeneity of variance. Um, so we'll get to homogeneity of variance a bit later, but let's take a look at how we can assess for uh, the assumption of normality. So one way to do this is just go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. Then we can transfer our independent variable into the factor list box and age, sorry, score into the dependent list box. I've got both ticked down here. Let's take a look. Okay, we don't need that. So let's go to Plots. I will untick Stem and Leaf. I'll tick Histogram. I'll tick Normality Plots for Tests. Then I'll go to OK, continue, then finally OK. OK, so what I'll look at first is probably this test of normality table. So if we take a look at the control uh, row of this table and at the Shapiro-Wilk section of this table, we can see that we have a SIG value of 0.161. And because this is above 0 0.05, this indicates that the data within this group are normally distributed. On the other hand, we have a significant SIG value in the intervention row. So this suggests that the data for the intervention group are not normally distributed. Um, so I'll take a look at how to, to handle that violation of the assumption a bit later. Uh, we can also sort of Take a look at, we can compare these results to the histograms below. So we've got 
this histogram here for score uh, in the control group. So we can see that this is quite symmetrical. So it, it sort of corresponds to a normal distribution approximately. So that's in line with this non-significant value here. Uh, on the other hand, we can see that the the uh, scores for the intervention group are less symmetrical. We have a, a kind of a larger section to the right than on the left, and that's in line with, with the score being significant. And as I said, well, I'll, I'll get to how we can deal with that assumption a bit later. Okay, so that's one of the assumptions of the of the ANOVA as well as the ANCOVA. And, but the ANCOVA has some more specific assumptions that we can assess as well. Um, so one of them is that there is a linear relationship between the dependent variable and the covariates. And one way, one way we can check this is by creating a scatter plot just to see whether a straight line goes through the data points. So if we go to graphs and then down to legacy dialogues, uh, then down to scatter slash dots, I will choose simple scatter. Then I'll go to define. Then I'm going to put um, age in the x-axis, score in the y-axis. So covariates here, dependent variable here. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to put condition and set markers by. And then go to OK. OK, so we can see that we have blue dots representing data for the control condition, and we have red dots uh, representing data for the intervention condition. And we can already see that this um, these data are, are organized in very straight lines. So I've just double clicked on, on that, and that opens the chart editor. And if we go up here, where it says, add fits line, add subgroups, this will add two lines that represent those two groups. And in this case, these, these lines are very similar. So there's actually two lines here, but they're basically sort of overlapped with each other. So we can, we can see from this scatter plot that the relationship between the dependent variable and the covariate can be represented very well by straight lines. If, if that wasn't the case, we would see lots more dots all over the place, and it would be hard to see how a straight line could represent those those data points well. And in this case, because this is actually you know not real data, we can see that this a straight line can pretty much perfectly represent these data points. So another assumption of the uh, ANCOVA is that the slope of these lines is very similar. So in this case, we can see that um, that's definitely the case. These, the, the slopes of these two lines are, are basically identical, but there is a way of checking that statistically as well. So let's take a look at how to do that. So I'll just close this. And then I'll go to Analyze, then uh, down to General Linear Model, then to univariates. And I'm just going to transfer uh, condition to the, the fixed factors box. That's the independent variable. Score is going to go in the dependent variable box. Age is going to go in the covariates box. Then I'm going to go to model. And I'm going to select build custom terms. I'm going to put condition down here and then add sort of peers over here. I'll do the same thing for age. So that will also, also appear over here. And then finally, I'll go condition. I'll put this down here. I'll take this buy box and I'll click this add box. Um, and I'll move age down as well. So now we have condition times age and I'll add that. So that'll be the last thing. Something to bear in mind is that this window might look a bit different depending on which version of SPSS you have. Basically, you want to ultimately see that in this box here you have your um, your IV, your uh, covariates, and something that represents the, the IV and the covariates. So once I've done that, I'll go to continue, and then to OK. And really, all I'm interested in in this table that has been generated is this value here. So this tells us basically that the slopes that we looked at previously, there's not a difference between them. They're very similar. 
And so that's that's one of the assumptions of the of the Yankover. Um, so one second, it is called the it's got a fancy name. So it's called the homogeneity of regression slopes. So we'll get I'll get back to these results a bit later. Okay, so now we've sort of checked the assumptions, we've checked the homogeneity of regression slopes, we've checked that there's a linear relationship between the dv and the covariates, and we've checked normality. We can now uh, just run the ANCOVA, and while we're doing this, we can check the final assumption of homogeneity of variance. So to do that is actually pretty much the same process as we just did. So we're going to go to Analyze, uh, down to General Linear Model, then across to Univariate. And we're just going to click on model again, and we're going to switch this back to full factorial. Then we'll go to continue, and you can see that these are still these variables are still in the boxes we put them in before, and we still want them in these boxes. So there's nothing we need to do there. Um, I'm going to click on em means. I'm just going to transfer my independent variable over to displaying means for. Then I'll go to continue. Um, I'll go to options. I select select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. So taking this box here is gonna give us the results uh, of a Levine's test. And um, that's gonna tell us whether we have uh, violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance or not. So once we've done that, we can go to continue, and then okay, and that will run the hangover for us. Uh, so the first thing we can check is this Levine's test of equality of area variances table. And what we want to see here is that the, the value is not significant. So we want it to be above 0 0.05. So that seems to be the case on this occasion. So we can assume or we can conclude that the assumption of equality of variance has been met. So once we've checked that, uh, let's go down to this test of between subjects effects table. and so we were interested in whether there is a difference in uh, cognitive, uh, cognitive test scores between the two groups. So to, to look at that, we can look at this condition row and we want to go over to this uh, SIG value and we can see that the, the value is 0.74. So obviously that's above 0 0.05. So that there is not a significant difference in cognitive test scores um, between the two conditions after controlling for age. On the other hand, we can see, if we look at this age row, that um, there is a significant relationship between age and the dependent variable. Uh, so that's pretty much how you run the analysis. So let's now take a look at how we can report these results. So it would start off just by saying what test you did. So we can do, we can say something like a one-way analysis of covariance or an ANCOVA was run to examine whether cognitive test scores uh, differed between the intervention and control groups while controlling for age. And then we can just mention that we did some tests to assess these various assumptions uh, of the ANCOVAS. We have the assumption of normality, linearity, homogeneity of regression slopes, and homogeneity of variance. Um, so let's take a look first at the normality assumption. So uh, we're going to say that we did a shapiro wilk test and that scores were normally distributed in the control group. So I've got some stats here, so let's just take a look at where those stats come from. So that comes from this test of normality table. Um, so as I mentioned before, we're just focusing on this side of the table. And so this is the degrees of freedom value, this is the W value, and this is the P value. So if we compare this, we have 931 here, and so we also have a 93 here. So that's just been rounded to do this more places. So W equals 93. That's the degrees of freedom, uh, degrees of freedom values. That's 20. And we've got P equals 161. So that just corresponds to this value here. So that suggests that the data are normally distributed. Um, but I've just done the same thing for the, the intervention group. Um, and I've argued in this case that even though the assumption is violated, I pointed out that most researchers think or feel that the it's okay to violate that assumption to some extent. Uh, specifically, they would normally say that it, 
that the ANCOVA is quite robust to violations of normality. So I've just said something like that, and I've referred the reader to a reference that, that makes that argument. And I've also pointed out that the, that the histogram suggests that the violation of that assumption isn't that severe. So even though this histogram looks a bit, a bit asymmetrical, it's, uh, there's kind of a, a hint of it being normal. So I've just, I've just provided, I would provide that as an appendix for the reader. So I've said no steps were taken to address this assumption. Um, steps you could take would be doing transformations on the data, but we won't do that in this video. Uh, so that covers the the uh, assumption of normality. So let's take a look now at the assumption that there is a linear relationship between the dependent variable and the covariates. So in this case, I've just referred the reader to an appendix. So that's the let me see. <clears throat> so that's this appendix here. So clearly there's a straight line, or a straight line can be used to represent this data very well. And I've also suggested that this, that this scatter plot supports this, this assumption here, homogeneity of, regress of regression slopes, because these slopes, they look very similar, don't they? It's not that we have one line going this way and one line going this way. These, these lines look very parallel to each other. And I suggested that this is supported by a, a test that we did, so an F test. Um, so I've got some stats here, and I'll just show you where I got those numbers from. So that comes from here. So I've, I'm specifically just looking again at this row here. So the control, sorry, the condition times age row. And the crucial thing was this 0.736, that value is above 0 0.05. So that indicates that uh, those, those slopes are very similar. And if we take a look at the specific values, I've got F1, uh, F equals 0, 1, 2. So that comes from here. So I've just rounded this value here to two decimal places. I would also have a 1 and a 36. These are degrees of freedom, and these come from here and here. And then lastly, I've just got this p-value, p equals 736, or 0.736, and that comes from here. So that's going to help us to support this, um, this claim that, that, that the assumption that the slopes are similar is supported. So the last uh, assumption we're going to check is the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And for this, we're just going to do um, report some similar stats for the Levine's test. So Levine's test is, <clears throat> is here. So as before, we've got an F value, so 0 0.805 here. And that is uh, being rounded to 0 0.81 here. Got these degrees of freedom values, we've got 1 and 38. So you can see those in brackets here, and we've got p equals 375. And we have p equals 375 here. So we've now reported the, the assumptions, and we are arguing that those, that those assumptions have been met. So we can now go on to reporting the results of the ANCOVA itself. So I've said something like, after controlling for age, there was not a significant effect of condition on cognitive test scores. And I've got these stats here, which are very similar to the ones we've just looked at, but let's take a look at where those come from. So it's, I'm looking at this condition uh, row, and then we've got this F value of 0.127, and just rounded that to two decimal places here. We've got degrees of freedom, so we've got one there and we've got 37 there in the error row and we've got the same thing here p equals 74 that just comes from the sig column so p equals 74 and we've got a partial eta squared and so that's the last thing i've reported in this result section and i've just said it's in this case it's below 0.01 then I've just said that the, the estimated marginal means were similar 
in the control group and the intervention group, and I've provided those means as well as uh, standard errors. So let's take a look at where these come from. So the, the descriptive statistics for the control group come from <clears throat> from this last table. So five uh, five point eight one six, and that's just been rounded to five point eight two. That standard error value also comes from this table. So point uh, zero three. And then the same thing for the intervention uh, condition. So that just comes from this, this row below. And then finally, I've just said that the age was significantly related to cognitive tests. And as before, uh, all of that information just comes from the from this table when it comes from the age row uh, of this table. So we've got F equals this big number here, and we've got that here. We put these degrees of freedom, one equal one of the 37, so that's one here, and this other one from the error row again. Then we've got the, the p-value, so here we just see 0 0.000, so we just know that this is less than 0 0.001, and then we have this partial error square, so that's 0 0.985, and I've just rounded that to two decimal places there. Uh, so that's about all there is for the one-way ANOVA uh, sorry, ANCOVA video. Um, hopefully that's clear. If you have any questions about anything, please just let me know in the comments. And thanks very much for watching.